hello, hello, everybody. This is Elissa from Mink Arts and Crafts. And today I'm super excited because I have the Kidding Up video for Flower Delivery Version 2 by Yume Art and brought to us from Diamond Art Club. So it took quite a while for this, um, this particular kit to get to me. Uh, it always takes quite a while for everything to get to me. I'm in, I'm in Southern California, but I'm in the middle of the desert. Uh, and it usually takes, for a regularly in stock kit, it usually takes about eight days or so for the kits to get to me out here. Uh, from when I order to when things get shipped, like actually arrive after being shipped. Uh, yeah, I think it's about eight days. So usually if they, if I order on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, now you see me here doing my math Saturday. Uh, no, still nine, nine days, usually about nine days, maybe 10. So realistically, um, I haven't seen like, even though the, um, um, they've moved from, um, Diamond Art Club has moved from the, um, New Jersey over to Texas for their where for their where hard warehouse. Sorry, words are hard this evening. Uh, even though they've moved from, uh, um, warehouses and other in Texas, which is, you know, geographically closer to me, uh, I haven't really seen a difference, maybe like a day sooner and how long it takes for the kits to actually get to me. Uh, but not that much of a difference. And granted this particular kit did actually, um, act, this one was, a, was classified as a pre-order. So it took a little bit longer, uh, from when it, I actually ordered it before it actually arrived in the warehouse and then of course could be shipped out. So I didn't actually get this one in until um, the 11th. So I got this one in on Tuesday night. Uh, so I was super excited about that. I immediately recorded my kidding up video for it. Uh, but then of course, cause uh, once I had this one kitted up, uh, I could then actually post the video for version one, which is what I did. So that's why you saw the version one video come up the day before you're seeing this one version two. So that was super exciting. Um, and now that, uh, you're getting this video, which I'm excited about, I already talked in version one. I talked about the video or basically about the whole plan and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I don't really feel the need to go in depth on, you know, the whole plan and my comparison between the two. I'm not going to talk for the entirety of this one. Uh, I did find a way to actually speed it up so, a little bit faster uh, in my editing process. So the previous video, you would, you were, if you were one to watch it, um, you were watching at like twice as fast or like two times the speed. And this particular video, you're now watching me at four times the speed. Um, as you can see, I have two sets of trays out in front of me, uh, and this is my first time kidding up something with that many colors. Also, uh, as I had mentioned in the previous video, if you watched my version one kidding up, I'm the person that likes to work with the smallest containers possible. So you'll see me like trying to cram as many drills as possible into these containers. And there were a couple of them, uh, I kind of sorted out my trains a little bit and said, okay, I need, how am I going to do this? How am I going to kind of get these going? I kind of actually with this particular one, I did start with the smallest first, uh, because those are my last two Elizabeth Ward trays that I had, um, empty. Cause I have a couple canvases already kitted up that I was working on one that I had just finished, but I hadn't filmed a post review and kitted down yet. Uh, another that I was working on, that I have now literally just finished this evening, right before uh, filming this, like, um, my voiceover. But at the time of kidding up, I had not finished the canvas. And my paint gems that I always have, I always have a paint gem kit kitted up in part of, like, the left half of a uh, Elizabeth Ward uh, tray. And then I'll have, like, another small kit kitted up in the right half of a, an Elizabeth Ward tray. So... Uh, version one, I was able to get it to fit into one tray and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to use like a tray and a half for my version two is what I was guesstimating would, what I would need. 
But I was like, the key is, okay, I have to try to make this fit with the different containers. And how am I going to like do this size-wise? Because I know I have a lot of tiny containers, but do I have enough of the different larger sizes? That was kind of the key, knowing what sizes I had already kitted up. Um, of my non-kitted up you know, containers, do I have the sizes necessary? So I was like, let me fit as many drills as I can into these tiny containers. And if I have just a couple drills that won't fit, I'll just put them in the baggies. So that's what you'll see me doing in here. Um, so I kind of started with that. And I think uh, for the most part, I think I ended up, uh, as I go through this process, I think I'll have like five or six that end up kind of like overflowing a little bit. I was also dealing with like a lot of, a fair amount of static here um, and some jumping drills. And I get to a certain point, as you can see with this one here, that I just give up and I'm like, eh, those few number of drills are just not worth the hassle, not worth the effort. I'm just calling it, they're staying in the baggie. <laughs> they're just not worth it. Uh, and then also uh, like that particular one, the drills just, they were kamikazes. They just did not want to stay in the container. They were jumping out of it. Um, they they were like, nope, we're, we're, we're gone. We're out of there. So they just kept jumping, and it was, yeah, very frustrating. But I, I feel like the static is a constant hassle out here in the desert. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's so frustrating. I'm ready to not live in this dry climate and live somewhere where there's some humidity so I don't have to fight with quite as much of the static. I'm looking forward to that. It'll be a nice break because I feel like it just makes it so much worse when I'm out here and I have to deal with all of the static. So you can see me constantly picking them up. Uh, I did decide, normally I lay out all of my drills. I don't put them directly into the container. I just kind of like lay them out in front of me uh, as you saw me do with version one. But I was thinking about it and I'm like, ah, I can't really do that this time around. Um, because if I do that, I feel like I'm going to really clog up my workspace. Um, and I'll run out, I'll run out of space quickly because there's like, you can, there's 81 colors. That's a lot of drills and a lot of containers to clog up the workspace that you can see me using right here. Uh, so I decided I would just put them as I'm doing them I'll put them right into the containers and at the end I'll go ahead and worry about the actual um, organizational process so at the end of the video you'll see me go through and actually organizing them um, and then uh, kind of going through that process a little bit there so I'm gonna let you guys uh, ease into some music and then at the end I'll come back over and you'll see how I changed things up a little bit towards the end. So uh, you guys can enjoy some, if you're one to watch the time lapsing of everything, you can enjoy the time lapsing. Yeah, you can see there they had an, a random bag that was separated from the other bags. And I was like, oh, wow, that's odd because uh, they were not in the same train at all. So that was interesting. Um, but rather than giving you guys like what would essentially turn into whip and chat number two so far this week uh, when I haven't even actually recorded a whip and chat yet uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ease off into some music and then I'll come back on in a little bit later in the video so you can stay tuned and I will talk to you shortly all right
Hello everybody, I am back again. Uh, so now that you see that I have completely finished actually putting all of the, the drills into their respective containers, I went back through and I realized I had only had seven uh, drills or seven colors that didn't fit into the size container I had them in. So I was like, okay, hey, I finished putting everything in containers. Now let me go through and size them up a little bit. Uh, so that way I can get everything into containers and I don't have these baggies. Because uh, first I wanted to see what I had left over of the next size up to make sure I hadn't run out. Uh, so this is where I went back through uh, and I sized them back up. And that's what you're watching me do right here. Uh, I kind of sized them back up a little bit um, because I did have a couple of the containers left over. Uh, you'll notice on the far right, the last bag of drills, I think it's the 319 on the far right. That one, as you'll notice, I do not, I do not have a larger size container and that's because I only have a couple of the, um, I only have a finite number of the super extra large um, drill containers and I've already used them with uh, my version one and now so far already with this particular one with version two so the workaround for that is you just add a second container of the whatever size you need to add the overflow and that's what you'll see me do in a second here with that because I just needed that little bit extra space so um, they wouldn't all fit in the large or in the what I consider the large container because uh, I classify them as small medium large and extra large um, so the container there that I just put it in is that container and that's what they kind of looked like and it's like boop and now I zoomed in a little bit and I'm going to organize them all for you uh, so you'll see a little bit of my method I kind of start a little bit of for the organization process uh, like I mentioned in the previous video for version one um, we'll see if I change it at all as I start working on um, these canvases. I probably won't. I'll just familiarize myself with where the um, where the symbols are on each of the canvases. But my brain just doesn't even like want to contemplate the thought of taking them out of their number because it's like they're one through eighty one. So to me, it would just be, I, I don't know if I could bring myself to putting them out of order at all. Uh, that just wouldn't work. And you can see there that number um, 18 is the 319 that I mentioned just a moment ago, where there's two containers of 319. And I usually don't go back through and record, or like, I don't go back through and put 319 into like a, um, 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 when I have the two containers like that, I don't usually end up putting a symbol on both containers because when they're right beside each other, I know what it is. And that, that's not something that I worry about. Um, so that's not something that you'll see me uh, focusing on or anything like that. But you will see as I do this process, we're almost done. But I'll kind of sort them a little bit, make columns at the bottom, and stack them so they're in semi-order, so it's a little bit easier to go through them, because this took a whole heck of a lot longer than what you're actually seeing now. I sped this up. I think this section took me about, uh, I think it took me about 12 to 15 minutes to organize them on their tray, because I didn't do it in my normal full-blown order. So I had a lot of hunting and pecking, which is a slow process. And then of course that bothers me that they're not all fully organized there. So I was like, okay, what do I need to do to make those look better? Because that bothers me. Uh, so I needed to do something about that because that bothers me and I do not like that. So you can see I had to find my solution to make it work. And that's what I did. And then you're like, you'll see that I made it and it looked better because I like my rows to be full and equal. And that's what I did to make it equal and filled in the trays, put my label on the top, and we are done and good to go, and I will see you in the next video.